Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm now answering question number four from the unused um, January 2022 um, International A Level at Excel P4, Pure Mathematics P4 paper. And this question here is about partial fractions first. Four part A is about partial fractions. So they ask us to express this in partial fractions. Okay, so that's what they've asked us to do. So they've told us to take f of x, and they've told us x is greater than 2, and we have to express this in partial fractions, meaning we have to do the opposite of adding fractions together. We have to split these fractions apart from each other. We have to split them apart and, and express them as separate fractions. Now, what we have to be careful of is the fact that we have what's called a repeated root here. And this is how we're going to deal with it. So we have 4 minus 4x divided by x times x minus 2 squared. And when you have a repeated root, this is what you do, how you deal with it. First of all, you have always you have constant numerators. So you have a over x plus, then you say b over x minus 2. So you take one of them as a linear factor. But the other one, you write c over x minus 2 squared. So whenever you have a repeated root, that's exactly how you write it out. Okay, this is exactly how you write it out. Okay, it's very important that we do this. Okay, so you see a repeated root, the whole bracket squared, or even like if, if it was x squared by itself, you would do the same thing. All right, you say a over x plus b over x squared. But this is x minus 2 all squared. You, you, you do this. If it was x squared minus 2, that's not considered a repeated root. Like if it was x squared minus 4, for example, that would that would up into x plus 2 times x minus 2. There will be two separate roots. It will be a over x plus b over x minus 2 plus c over x plus 2, something like that. That's not a repeated root. A repeated root when the whole bracket squared or just the term like x squared by itself without something adding to it. Okay, so this is how you deal with the repeated roots. Now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply through the whole of both sides of this identity by the LCM of the denominators, which is x times x minus 2 squared. So we're going to multiply through by x times x minus 2 squared. That's what we're going to do. So this side, everything cancels out on the denominator. And here we have a times, if I multiply this by x times x minus 2 squared, the x's will cancel. I'll be left with x minus 2 squared. And if I multiply b over x minus 2 by x times x minus 2 squared, one of the x minus 2's would cancel out. So I'll be left with b times x times x minus 2. And if I multiply c by this x times x minus 2 squared, the x minus 2 squared will cancel out, leaving you with just c times x. Now, for us to be able to find the values of um, a and b and c, we can apply a few different types of um, strategies. One of them, we could compare the coefficients of both sides if we wanted to, or we could um, use some sort of substitution to eliminate certain of the letters, or we can do a combination of both, or sometimes we have to do a combination of both. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with substituting x equals 0 into the whole of this identity, because I can see that that's going to cause this and this to cancel out, leaving me with a. So 4 minus 4 times 0 is 4. And this side, you've got a times 0 minus 2 squared, which is going to give me 4. Minus 2 squared is positive 4. So therefore, we can say 4 is equal to 4a. Therefore, a is equal to 1. So I know the value of a is 1. So that's 1 over x. Now we're going to find a b and c. So I can also do something similar. I can find what c is by substituting x equals 2 into the whole thing. That will cause this bracket to become 0, and this bracket becomes 0. So these terms will be eliminated, leaving you with the c term. So 4 minus 4 times 2 is equal to, as I said, this and this will both become 0. I'll be left with c times 2. So 4 minus 8 is minus 4 equals 2c. So therefore, I could say c is equal to uh, minus 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2. So I know that this is negative 2 over x minus 2 squared. Now what's left for us is to find what b is. Now to find what b is, I can't use substitution anymore because if I use substitution, what I'll be um, 
uh, I mean, if I put x equals zero, this disappears. If I put x equals two, this disappears. This disappears. Whatever I use substitute to get rid of the other terms, the b will also disappear, and I won't be left with a b term. So what I have to do is I have to now um, substitute. Uh, no, what I have to do now is compare the coefficients. Okay. So if I think about the b term, the b term will have um, you can, you'll have bx squared minus 2bx, right? I think the x squared term is the best to, to compare because there's less x term, x squared terms. If I expand this bracket, I'll have a times x squared as my the x squared term here. On this side, I've got no x squared term, so 0 equals. This will be a times x squared. And if I expand this bracket, I'll have b times x squared plus b times x squared. So a plus b is equal to 0. I know a is equal to 1. So I can say 0 equals 1 plus b. So therefore, I can say b is equal to negative 1. Okay. So I have a equals 1, c equals minus 2, b equals negative 1. I now have the three numbers that go on top of here. So I can rewrite this as 4 minus 4x over x times x minus 2 squared. 4 minus 4x over x times x minus 2 squared splits up into um, a over x. That's 1 over x minus 1 over x minus 2, that's minus 1 over x minus 2, and minus 2 over x minus 2 squared, x minus 2 all squared. So that is how this splits up into partial fractions, and there we have the answer to 4 part A. Now for part B, it says, hence find the integral of fx with respect to x. So we've got to integrate this with respect to x. Now, obviously, writing in this way is what's going to help us to integrate it. So I'm going to rewrite f of x as 1 over x minus 1 over x minus 2 minus 2 over, well, in fact, I'll write this in a form that's easy to integrate. That's 2 times. 2 times x minus 2 to the power of negative 2, and all of that is integrated with respect to x. Okay, so I have to integrate that now with respect to x. Now you have 1 over x, that gives you lin of the modulus of x. Okay, and if I have 1 over x minus 2, that's going to be minus the lin of the modulus of x minus 2. And this, if I integrate it, this is of the form where I add 1 to the power, and divide by the new power, and then divide by the differential what's inside the function. Even here, I have to divide by the differential what's inside the function, which is 1, so that's why I didn't do anything to that. But you've got minus 2x minus 2 to the power of negative 1. Add 1 to the power. Divide by the new power, which is minus 1, and by the differential what's inside the function, which is just 1. I've got plus c. So simplifying this, we could write this as lin of the modulus of x divided by x minus 2. I could even leave it separate if I wanted to. And this will be plus 2. We could put it as 2 over 2 divided by x minus 2. So we have 1 plus c. Don't forget the plus c. And there we have the answer to part b of the question. Okay, so I, I could have left it like this and just put at the end plus 2 over x minus 2 or plus 2 times x minus 2 to the power of minus 1 plus c. Okay, I could have done that if I wanted to. That's fine. But that's the answer to part b. Now we're going to go on to part c. Now part c basically is telling us to take this, what we found. So we've got the integral of f of x written, but with the limits now. So I don't need to put the plus c, but I put the limits at the end of the bracket now. So I've got this plus 2 over x minus 2, and I've got to use the limits of 5 and 3, and I have to write it in the form a plus lin b, where a and b are rational numbers to be found. Okay, so I've got to substitute 5 and 3 into here, so I have lin, and this is going to be 5 over 3, because that's 5, 5 minus 2, that's 5 over 3. Okay, I don't need to put the modulus now, because this is positive, plus 2 over 5 minus 2, which is 3. Minus, now I've got to put 3 into here, so that gives me lin of 3 over 1, which is lin of 3, plus 2 over 2 over 1. Okay, so I've got lin of 5 over 3 
plus two thirds minus lin of three minus two. Okay, so now I've got lin of five over three divided by three. And I got two thirds minus two, so plus two thirds minus six over three, you could say. So that's going to give me the lin five over three divided by three, which is five over three times a third, which is lin of five over nine. And I'm going to have minus four over three. So that's A plus B, where A and B are rational numbers to be found. So you can say A is five over nine. And B is negative 4 over 3. There's our answer. We've written in this form. We don't have to write this down, but it's fine to do that. So there we have the answer to part C of this question. And that concludes question number 4 from this paper. Other questions from this particular paper can be found from the playlist that will appear in this region here. Other questions to do with um, partial fractions can be found in this playlist and other questions to do with integration using lin. I'm, I guess it's part of partial fractions anyway, so I'll put it in that same um, playlist over here because integration to do with this lin stuff is all in the partial fractions chapter. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link over here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.